In this lecture, we're going to learn what is Redux Thunk and how to use it in the Redux application. Many times, when building a web application, you will need to call an API, which means some asynchronous action is going on. Redux Thunk is a middleware that does these asynchronous actions with Redux. Redux by itself does not allow asynchronous actions. Redux Thunk is a middleware library for Redux. Redux middleware is a code that intercept actions coming into the store via the dispatch method. Redux thunks return an inner function and the inner function receives the store methods dispatch and gate state as a parameter. Now, for example, let's say you create action creator and inside that you call an API. You all know API may take some time to get the data from the server. In that case, you have to make your application asynchronous. The thunk can be used to delay the dispatch of an action or to dispatch only if a certain condition is met. Let me show you a very simple example to understand how to work with Redux Thunk library. So I'm going to just simply first install this library in my Redux application because Redux Thunk is not inbuilt. So I'm going to open my terminal. Let me first stop my development server and here I'm going to say npm i for install Redux Thunk. When I press enter, this will install the Redux Thunk library inside my project. Once I have this library, let me clear the screen and call npm start to start the development server. And just for that, let me just back to my store.js and create a new example here. So let me get rid of all this code from here. And here, I'm going to first import the create store and apply middleware functions. And just for that, just down here, I'm going to first create a variable initial store and specify initial value to it. So I'm going to say here x is equal to 1. So I'm going to pass value to this x property. Just out of that, I'm going to create a reducer function inside this store. If you want, you can create a dedicated file for the reducer function as well. That's upon you. But just for this example, I'm going to put here reducer function. So I'm going to say here constant reducer is equal to and specify an arrow function here. And as you know, reducer function have two parameters. First is a state and second is a action. I'm going to initialize the state with the initial value of this constant variable. Inside this reducer, I'm going to create here a switch case. So I'm going to say here switch and in the parenthesis, I'm going to say action dot type and in the curly braces, I'm going to create my first case. So inside this switch case, I'm going to create my first case. So I'm going to say here case increment when the action is equal to increment, I'm going to just increase the value of the x by one. Just out of that, let me add my second case. So just down here, I'm going to add my second case like this. So if the action is equal to decrement, I'm going to just minus one from this state. So just down here, I'm going to paste my third case like this. So here I'm going to say if the action is equal to re reset, then I'm going to just specify one value to the state. And just out of that at the bottom right here, I can just simply specify default case. So I'm going to say here default return state like this. So this is my simple reducer for the counter example. Just for that, just down here, I'm going to simply call constant store is equal to create store. And inside it, as you know, we need to first pass the reducer. So I'm going to say here reducer as a first parameter. And in the second parameter, I'm going to pass my middleware. So in this lecture, we are working on Redux Thunk. So I'm going to say here apply middleware. And inside this parenthesis, I'm going to pass the Thunk library. So at the top, let me first import the thunk library here. So I'm going to say here import thunk from and in the single quote, I'm going to say redux thunk. And I'm going to just specify this function, this thunk function inside this apply middleware like this. And just out of that, don't forget to export your store. Back to your index.js and here I'm going to leave everything as it is. Just out of that, I'm going to open my counter.js and here I'm going to change few things. So what I'm going to do is inside my counter, let me just get rid of these comments and inside this render statement, I'm going to just copy some JSX and paste it here like this. So I'm going to create here three buttons. First for the decrement, second for the increment and third for the reset. Now here you can notice when I click on this first button, I'm going to call the handler function decrement. When I click on the second button, I'm going to call the increment. And when I click on this third button, I'm going to call the reset handler function. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my map state to props function as well as my map dispatch to props function to pass these values. 
So as you know, to pass property to the component, we can use map state to props. So instead of this state to props, I'm going to change this function name for the reference, and I'm going to say here map state to props is equal to pass state to it. Let me get it off this console, and just for that, I'm going to return x property with the value of x. So I'm going to just create a property x inside my component and pass state x value. As you know, inside my store, you can notice I have here x initial state to the store. I'm going to access that store value and specify it to this component property. And just for that, inside this map dispatch to props, I'm going to create dispatch events. So I'm going to first return the increment event. So instead of this increment props, I'm going to change this to increment like this and pass handler function. And to this handler function, I'm going to pass dispatch method and pass action type increment. I have this action type increment inside my reducer. So I'm going to call here increment. And just for that, I'm going to call here decrement and reset functions. The map dispatch to props method is going to pass all these three handler methods to this component. So I can access all these methods using my properties. So let me just copy first this function and pass that here. And as you know, I already have this function as a second argument to this connect. I'm going to leave everything as it is back to my component, save it. And here you can notice inside my constructor, I'm going to first print my component. I'm going to just back to my browser and reload it. And you can notice here, just down here, inside my counter example, inside my props, here, I'm going to have few properties. Decrement, increment, recent, and x. The initial value of the x is 1 right now. Let me access all these properties and specify that. So just down here, inside my printer statement, I'm going to simply create here a constant variable. And I'm going to just destructure all these properties. So I'm going to say here equal to sign this dot props. You can notice my example is working fine. When I click on the plus button, it will increase the counter value. And when I click on the minus button, it will decrease the counter value. And when I click on the reset, it will reset the counter value to one. Now let's suppose when you click on this plus button, you want to get the value from the API and increase the value of the counter. When you get the value from the API, it will make some delay in the execution. To handle this asynchronous behavior of the action, we need to make action in the Redux thunk structure. So let me show you how to create a thunk function in the Redux application. Thunk function is just like action creator. For example, let's say here, I just specify the hard-coded action. Let me create here action creator. So if I create here a function increment and specify here return type increment, then this is what we call the action creator. If you want, you can put this function in a dedicated file as well as an action creator. For this example, I'm going to leave this as it is. And this is what we call the action creator. And I'm going to just specify this function inside this dispatch parenthesis like this. The thunk function is similar to this action creator, but the thunk function is not going to return an object. Instead, it will return the function. Let me show you. Just down here, I'm going to create the thunk function, or you can say a thunk middleware function. So here yeah, I'm going to create a function. I'm going to name it increment async. That's upon you. You can name anything to this function. As I said, thunk function is going to return a function. So I'm going to just see here an arrow function. And this function is going to take a dispatch method as an argument. So I'm going to say here dispatch like this. And just for that, inside this function, you can access your dispatch method. So for example, you just make the API call here. And the API is going to make a request and get the response after two seconds. So I'm not going to make here API call. Instead, I'm going to call here set timeout function. So to mimic the API, I'm going to call here set timeout function. So I'm going to just say here set timeout and inside this parenthesis, I'm going to pass here callback function like this. And as a second argument, I'm going to pass the timeout value. So I'm going to say here two seconds. So I'm going to pass 2000 here. And inside this parenthesis here, I'm going to say dispatch. I'm going to call this dispatch parameter right here like this. And inside it, I'm going to call my action just like this. That's it. Your thunk function is completely ready. Now, you just have to use this function inside this dispatch. So here I'm going to say increment sync. When I click on this plus button, you can notice it's going to update the counter value after two seconds. Now, what if I click on this increment and suddenly click on this decrement? Let me show you. If I click on this increment and suddenly click on this decrement, you can notice the increment sync is going to get the current value of the store. 
So practice with this code to understand it more clearly. If you want to know more about Redux Thunk, just head on to Redux Thunk GitHub repository and here you can find more about this library. So I hope you understand how to work asynchronously in the Redux application. Next, we're going to see a similar library of Redux, which is Redux Saga.